spooky time is just around the corner, my friends. It's less than 100 days now till Halloween, so get your bats out. That sounded sexual. A YouTube comeback, I said. For the longest time, I've been trying to put my finger on why I've been hesitant about making this kind of YouTube video. Not the Disney vlogs, not the tour vlogs. Vlogs, I seem fine with. It's this that I seem to have forgotten how to do. And in December, when I made that video about making a comeback on YouTube, I was and still am genuinely excited about the prospect of making more videos like this. However, there's just been this turmoil, this sort of inner conflict about making this kind of video that I don't think is deep at all. I just haven't had the time to give it the thought that I want to give it. But I think I figured it out, or at least I'm very close to figuring it out, because what I do know is that it's a sense of vulnerability that I have when I make videos like this. Now, obviously I don't get that sense of vulnerability when I'm making a video about going to Disney or being on tour or even like backstage theater vlogs. Like I know that stuff like the back of my hand, that stuff that I'm interested in and who I am takes a back seat. Whilst I might be the one presenting the information and I'm the one in front of the camera, it doesn't feel as vulnerable because it's not about me. It's about Disney or it's about theater or it's about the tour. Even though I'm the one on camera, I don't feel like the one being watched. And it's an issue I never used to have because I think when I was younger, I was more than happy to be the center of attention. And also in the last 10 years, the internet has changed drastically. The way that we consume content has changed. The way that we create content has changed. Everything is more instant and quicker and we've got TikTok and Instagram Reels and this kind of long form content isn't as coveted anymore. But the main thing that has made me hesitant to make videos is that the internet is oversaturated with opinions. There isn't a single topic that hasn't already had millions of opinions shared on it across the globe all over the internet. So it's very hard to try and find something new to say or at the very least, a new way to say it. Back when I was originally making videos, it was much easier to be the first to say something, not because you were actually the first to voice that thought or that opinion, but because you were probably the first to make a YouTube video about it, because YouTube was just so new and vlogging was so new. So whilst I might not have been the first person to ever have the thought, I might have been one of the first people to share that thought, and that's what I found really exciting. However, now, <laughs> Everyone's vlogging, everyone's making content. And so every time there's been a topic or a conversation or something that's happened within the world or within the world of theater at the very least, that I've thought, oh, I'd love to be part of that conversation or I'd love to add my voice to that conversation, there's kind of been a sense of what's the point? Because chances are I'm not gonna say anything new and the thing that I would have wanted to say has probably been voiced much more eloquently and just better generally by other people. Especially when I've wanted to add my voice to a conversation that might be somewhat divisive or have an element of controversy to it. Like for instance, the whole should we be allowed to sing along in theatres. For those of you that don't know, Alison Hammond and Vanessa Feltz went on a British morning television show and both made comments about how it was absolutely fine to sing along at the theatre, to the point where Alison Hammond even said if she wasn't allowed to sing along at the theatre then she wouldn't even bother going. It caused a lot of uproar within the theatre community and I would have loved to have said more than just the tweet that I posted on that conversation because I find, I find theatre interesting as a whole, obviously. I find audience and, you know, on stage actors, I find that relationship very interesting. I then to, you know, extend that and branch out, I find parasocial relationships fascinating. Like I'm just, I'm, I am fascinated by the job that I have and the world that it exists in and the sort of etiquette and weird sort of unspoken rules that go with the world of theater. And I just, I love all of that. And I would have loved to have made a video on that, but everyone had an opinion. It became very, a very divisive conversation. And for want of a better term, I got scared of entering my voice into that conversation because I just don't like 
that sort of attention anymore. I don't, <laughs> if I can avoid having an onslaught of tweets sent my way, whether they're positive or negative, backing up my point or arguing against it, I just, God, I can't be bothered anymore. And that's not to say I will never add my voice to any conversation. If I think it's like actually genuinely really important that more people speak up on something, then of course I will add my voice to it. Um, but with things like, you know, people singing in theatres, it's it's pretty minor in the grand scheme of things. So I was I was happy just to sit that one out. But that's the thing. Am I happy to sit it out? That's why I'm making this video. So maybe I'm not. Because I miss this. I miss this. And I feel like there's an element of being scared off of making these videos because of the potential uh, backlash, onslaught of, you know, messages, comments, whatever, whether they're positive or negative, it's overwhelming having a lot of people tell you what they think about what you've said or who you are and, uh, you know, what you do and it's, it's, it's overwhelming and I think as I've gotten older, I, um, have just decided to put myself in those situations a lot less because it wasn't helping my anxiety. But of course, the sacrifice of that is not doing this, is not making these videos. I feel like I just need to find a happy balance. I need to find a nice little happy medium of making videos about things that I really want to talk about, even if I do feel like everything I've, everything I want to say has already been said by someone else. Sometimes it's nice just to share what you want to say and have people engage in that conversation. And again, I say all of this like I have really controversial opinions. I think my most controversial opinion is that I'm a cat person and pineapple belongs on pizza. I think there's very few opinions I hold that would make people gasp in horror. But surprisingly, even the things that you think aren't controversial in the slightest will garner some kind of anger and hatred and a dumpster fire in the comments. <laughs> from people who just, you know, want to watch the world burn and cause a lot of chaos. So yeah, over the past couple of years, I found myself with a lot that I would love to say and conversations that I would love to engage in and be a part of online, but haven't. And what's stopping me, essentially, is, well, what will people think? And it's very annoying because I'm very good at dishing out the advice those who matter don't mind and those who mind don't matter, but then can't take that advice myself, apparently. So that's why there has been a shortage on my channel of this kind of video, it's because I have lost sight over the last couple years of a few things. One being what's interesting. I feel like I've convinced myself that I have absolutely nothing interesting to say. Or I've just convinced myself that I've, that river has run dry. Like I've exhausted all of the interesting things that I could possibly say and now I've got nothing. But I've also lost sight of when it's okay just to make a video talking about something because you're interested in it. You don't necessarily have to say anything new or say something to make an impact. The old YouTube was all about just sharing, regardless. And a lot of people, I shared something on my, my Instagram subscribers story the other day, sort of voicing this. And you know, a lot of people were gorgeous and just messaged back and said, you know, we'll, we're happy to watch whatever you wanna, you know, put in front of us. and. Um, you know, anything you make will be worth watching, which is lovely and I appreciate those words. However, I'm not okay with just making any old crap and putting it in front of you and, you know, saying, this'll do, they'll watch it anyway, you know what I mean? And that's, I know that's not what everyone meant because I think all the lovely people that message me know me well enough to know that I will put something in front of you. I'll, I'll always strive to put something in front of you that I think is worth watching. But I think that's the thing. I've, I've struggled to convince myself that what I will make will be worth watching because I've convinced myself that I've got nothing interesting left to say. So I'm gonna try my hardest to get over that <laughs> and try and find a nice middle ground between um, making videos about things that I find interesting that I really want to talk about but also knowing when it's okay not to make a video about something because I don't think my anxiety can handle 
the amount of comments that it might garner. I feel like I just end all of my videos now with a promise to make more videos. So I'm not gonna do that, but know that that is in the, that is a subliminal message throughout this video. <laughs> and I will just mention that I'm currently in a show called The Crown Jewels, playing at the Garrick Theatre in London's West End with the wonderful Al Murray, Neil Morrissey, Mel Gedroich, Adonis Sadiq, Tanvi Vermani, um, who am I missing? Joe Thomas. It's a wonderful cast of gorgeous people. Ada McArdle, who I was very excited to work with because he played Slannon in Ella Enchanted. It's a fun time, it's a restoration comedy, it's a bit of a farce. There are four songs in it, all of which I sing. I play two roles, I play Lady of the Bedchamber and Elizabeth Edwards. It's all about uh, Colonel Thomas Blood, who, it's a true story, Colonel Thomas Blood attempted to steal the crown jewels from the Tower of London in 1671. Um, because the crown jewels back then were just guarded by a 77 year old man and they were literally kept in a cupboard. It's fun, it's silly, it's historical. We're all having a ball. Come and see us at the Garrick. We are there until the middle of September and then we go to Salford, Canterbury, Cardiff, Milton Keynes. I don't think in that order, maybe in that order, but they are the four venues that we tour to and we end on October. 13th? 14th, 14th, October 14th. We end on October 14th. God, this is like revealing how little I know what I'm doing for the rest of this year. So come and watch us. It's a fun time. And I will see you very soon, very soon.